Daddy, we really need to get a washing machine. My hat is hoof wash only. Well, why do I have to wash it? <laughs> you sent me to that recruitment center. It was your fault my hat got ruined. Your fault I snapped the necks of those poor innocent hippogriffs. Ergo, you wash hat. Hello, is Mad Munchkin here? She called me regarding a video about how awesome hippogriffs are. <laughs> I mean, a video about non-pony OCs. There's a giant pigeon in here. Ow, ow, Bad ow, pigeon. ow, ow, Bad. Stop it. Bad. Stop it. Stop it. Ow. Stop it. Shoot. Ow, ow. Bad. Mary Sue, stop abusing our guest. But I'm in charge of pest control. He's ow, a hippogriff, not a ow, pigeon. Ow. Bad. And stop no, it. you're not in charge ow, of pest ow. control. Ow. And ow, that's, ow. that's Lord's job. <laughs> At last, my existence finally has meaning. Really? A cutaway joke? Hey, gotta give the guy something to do until he finally puts his evil scheme he's been setting up into practice. <laughs> he thinks I don't know about it. Yeah, but anyway, Silver Quill isn't a pigeon, he's a hippogriff. A hippo what? For the umpteenth time, I'm only 3% pigeon on my father's side. Nah, <laughs> he's a griffin. No, hippogriff. I've got a horse's hindquarters. Behold my dark side of the moon. A hippogriff, huh? Hmm, nah, still look more pigeon than anything to me. Even from this angle. Oh, uh, hey, Mary Sue, haven't you got some off-screen shenanigans to do? He's no hippogriff! He's a giant horse's ass! Uh, and you have officially overstayed your welcome, Mary Sue. Go to your room. This isn't over, you glorified pigeon. Biologically speaking, she wasn't wrong about me being a horse's ass. Uh, hey, hey, uh, you want to do a video about non ponyosis Hmm. As long as there are no more brooms, I'm in. So I've been going over my recent videos, more specifically the ones discussing OCs within the MLP fandom, and um... Well, by the looks of things, the majority of OCs all seem to be made up of just three choices. Earth Pony, Pegasus, and a Unicorn. You forgot Alicorn! I MEANT to do that! Anyway, you know, there's also the Bat Pony and Changelings, I guess, but they are technically the same species, or at least all subspecies born from the same idea. The show has an entire menagerie of creatures to choose from, and I just wanted to discuss why there seems to be a lack of non pony OCs in the fandom. As one of the very few non pony OCs that I am aware of, Silver Quill, I wanted to hear your perspective on this, and perhaps tell us a little more about yourself. Much obliged. Yes, there is a wealth of choices when it comes to ponies. Amongst the three tribes, there are a variety of body types. So if the fear is not looking unique, there are always ways to accomplish that. Yet sometimes you just want to make a statement with one look, and stepping outside of the herd can be a fun way to do that. In my case, I wanted to make it clear that I was a fan of the show, hence the cutie mark, yet I'm also capable of doing something unexpected or outside the fandom, hence the beak. Pigeon's beak! Oi, shush it! Shush! Shush! Very interesting. In my experience, it is important for each character to have something unique in their aesthetics so they don't look generic. Variety in designs are important to me, and they also help to distinguish each character from another. But what has often confused me is the fact that these three choices, Earth Pony, Pegasus and Unicorn, are often thought to be the only choices that people consider when inventing an OC. That might be due to a lack of knowledge as well. Lots of folks bring up Buckbeak when they see my character, but the truth is I didn't even consider Harry Potter when I chose this glorious form. It's seriously ironic that that happens, since Hippogriffs, as I'm sure you know, were not the invention of J.K. Rowling. Oh, no, 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 far from it. The first recorded mention of a Hippogriff was around 1516, with the epic poem Orlando Furioso. In it, a knight relies on Hippogriff to speed around the world in search of a cure for a madness that befell another knight. A madness known as love. 
In my personal experience as a Duny, a Scottish fairy that can change from a small humanoid to a pony, that it allows me to branch out and talk about things other than MLP. I have noticed that this is more difficult to do if you limit yourself in the design of an OC. Being a hippogriff allows you more freedom in that regard. Well, I still have a cutie mark, which can be a little limiting. Pigeons don't have cutie marks! Which is why I'm a hippogriff! <laughs> So I also play with the idea of costumes, from Super Sentai Colors to Marshall Brave Star. I find it keeps my look fresh and helps get into the spirit of the show without having to invent an entirely new OC every time I step outside of MLP. It is refreshing to be able to have the freedom to step out of comfort zones and discuss other things as well as MLP. But of course not everyone invents OCs to use as avatars for videos. Ah uh, yes, the story-driven OC. Also important and something I'd like to see. As much as I enjoy Friendship is Magic, I'm a little disappointed at the lack of equestrian diversity. Outside of Zakura and Cranky, non-ponies don't seem to stick around much. I wouldn't mind if a Minotaur or Griffin or some other being became a resident. But that can be a scary prospect for fans, as it requires you to design something that looks like it could be part of the world, yet isn't something we've seen before. I suppose that's why most story-driven OCs don't actually stick to the canon of the show all that often. Look at Fallout Equestria, for example. That fanfiction had all sorts of chances to branch out and diversify, and although it did it to some degree, it could have done so much more. Though Fallout got its start close to the fandom's beginning. Since then, there have been a lot more design options in the franchise. The IDW comics have introduced trolls, bulls, and recently deer. We've had breezies and foreign ponies like Saddle Arabians and Myrtonians. The books even give us a new zebra design, of which I'm not terribly fond. Even for fans who don't follow the comics, the show has manticore, sea serpents, dragons, ursa minas and maiders, hydra, cockatrice, diamond dogs, even more mundane creatures like donkeys or the exotic zebra. And all of these are introduced in the first season of the show! So the truth is there's already a wealth of designs to start with if folks are willing to step outside the pony comfort zone and try and add their own flavor. I know when I put my OC together, I didn't want to have the pelican-like beak from Gustave Le Grand or the narrow beak from Gilda. I had to do some searching of large birds to find a beak I wanted. Pigeon's beak for Griffin! How do you live with her? I've been asking myself that for some time. As for research for my OC, I wanted her to reflect my nationality, so in pony form, she is a mix of a Clydesdale or a Shetland pony, hence all the hair and odd facial markings that make me look like I have 8 o'clock shadow. One of the funnest aspects of a non-pony OC is that you can approach a situation differently. Ponies might be prone to flight or parties or a similar reaction, but a griffin or minotaur would likely face a problem with aggression. It's one way to present the pros and cons of such a policy. There's so much more story and design opportunities when you consider all the possibilities made available to you. Nothing beats the mythical grace of a pegasus, the magic and class of a unicorn, or the down-to-earth ruggedness of an earth pony. But remember, your OC has to be unique to you. It must mean something to you and appeal to you, and not just be a cookie cutout character you can use that can't be told apart from another OC. I have to say, being a hippogriff already makes your character pretty unique. Well, there used to be a few other hippogriffs out there. Uh, yeah, uh, right. I think I went all Glasgow hooligan on them during an interview. It's all a little, it's all a little blurry, if I'm honest. <laughs> That's okay. Don't try to remember too hard, all right? Sweet Christmas, Christmas that will haunt me for eternity. eternity. Oh, hey, I'm just happy I managed to get all those bloodstains. I mean, um. <clears throat> Mud stains out of my hat. So no hard feelings about that, right? <laughs> None whatsoever. Excuse me, I hope you don't mind me interrupting this conversation. Oh, hey, Dr. Wolf. You got my message then? Yes, I did indeed. Though I seem to have missed the majority of the discussion, I'd still like to offer my input. I believe there is something the two of you had neglected to mention in your discussion. Could it be that so many fans choose to make pony OCs because their design is so pleasing to the eye compared to any other species that have been presented in the show? I choose not to take that personally. Warren Faust put in so much work designing the ponies to be as perfect as possible to draw in a wide variety of fans. She had many years experience with drawing various characters, but none of the other species in Equestria are quite as eye-catching overall. 
The pony's design fits the most with what humans actually like to see. In many respects, ponies have become so prevalent on the internet because they share much of the same appeal as cats. Big eyes in comparison to the size of the head, many different colors of fur to appeal to many different people's preferences, large ears and very expressive faces. At least the griffins are showing some palette variety, though they only have two body types. And I'll agree that none of them have a face that draws an audience. I had to stray from the griffin design by having bigger, brighter eyes and an alternate beak. Yet since I'm a pony griffin hybrid, I can take some liberties. Yeah, and some traits in horses from real life can be incorporated very easily into the design of ponies too. Like Shetland ponies like myself, for example. Wait, I thought you were a Clydesdale. <laughs> oh, picky, picky, picky. As for why I chose a wolf OC, I had certainly intended to create a pony OC when so many of my early fans were requesting me to include a character on screen to go with my voice. But the more I looked into it, the more I realized that I would have an immensely difficult time creating any kind of pony that would stand out from the thousands upon thousands of others already out there. In the end, I discovered that the biggest reason I wanted to make a pony OC was so I could fit in with all the other fans. And that really wasn't going to make for an interesting character. So instead, I went with what would fit with the name, Dr. Wolf. And you know what? My character instantly stands out from all the pony OCs in the fandom. And I didn't have to come up with exotic colors, hairstyles, or fancy powers. Sometimes going with the simple and straightforward can make a real difference in creating an interesting character. I think we can all agree that it is important that whatever we choose to represent ourselves within and indeed out with the fandom, that it should be meaningful to us. Being the only Wolf OC to my knowledge in the fandom, I think that we shouldn't limit ourselves just to the choices available to us within the show, but instead think outside of the box. Do the two of you think this is something we can encourage ourselves and others to do during the creative processes? Oh, I encourage that repeatedly. Thanks for coming over, Doc. Thank you for inviting me, Miss Mad Munchkin. Shall we continue next week with our usual sessions? Actually, Doc, <laughs> I was wondering if you could help out a friend of mine. I would be more than happy to, Miss Munchkin. A friend of yours is a friend of mine. And this one? Uh, pigeon tail. And this one? Pigeon beak. And this one? Pigeon eye. And this? Pigeon skull. Miss Sue, I notice a trend. What do you think I look like? A very furry pigeon. I can see I have my work cut out for me here. I'm Mad Munchkin. Stay, Stay creative. creative. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I see it now. You're a squirrel.